Tank. Ciao Matteo. Hey. Come stai? Very good. Molto bene. Molto bene. How's it going? Not too bad. Ha! Right. Look at this guy. Uh, JML 8200. Uh, classic EQ. Um, and it's a work of art. Uh, very simple and clever design. Not simplistic, but very simple, simple design. Uh, very effective and very reliable unit. Uh, this one got sent in to be double checked, uh, I think for noise, so I'm just running it through the software just to play about with it a bit and see what it sounds like. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the lid and I'm going to show you what's inside uh, and then we'll have a chat about it. So let's just get started! Right oh. Okay. So here we go. Right, so this is a Mark II. Uh, oh, there's some mods there. So somebody's been in here before. Uh, that's not original either. Okay, so this is a Mark II JML 8200. How can you tell? How can I tell? Well, first off, the easiest way to tell whether it's a Mark I or a Mark II, uh, it's because of the um, bypass switches. So they have toggle switches on my Revision One, and these are just push button. Uh, I think these are e EAO switches the Swiss make, so they're really reliable, really good switches. And more than that, it's the there's only one buffer or input and output card at the back instead of two and these are the new op amps revision two op amps uh, that throughout throughout the unit uh, as opposed to this which is an old card there you go that's got different op amps on these are the old ones so let me just run you through this uh, it's a class a um, completely discrete design uh, which we absolutely love because we, we like op amps, but we prefer transistors. Uh, and it's a class A, so, uh, but it has two rails, so it's double rail, plus and minus, because there are some other op amps that are doing several functions in here. Um, completely discrete, all, everything is designed by George Massenburg. I think this is still assembled, built and assembled by uh, Manley, if I'm correct. Um, there are no electrolytics in the signal path whatsoever, so it's all polystyrene VEMA capacitors um, throughout the design. So it's 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 a really interesting and really good sounding EQ. Um, balanced in, balanced out as usual, and it's a T bridge design. So uh, if you think about EQs, there are various typology of EQs, pull tech uh, or inductor based EQ at one. This is a T bridge, so what it does is use, it uses a capacitor, a set of capacitors and resistors to set the center of the frequency uh, that the EQ is going to affect instead of switching e points, e um, inductor points on an inductor. So, in its b basic form, a T bridge, uh, I'll show you on a piece of paper, let's see if we can draw it. Uh, it's basically an op amp with, well, that's my inverting and non inverting. And you strap across between the inverting input and the output a series of resistors, capacitors. You just take these together and then you go to ground with another cap. So this network sets the frequency point of the EQ itself. So this is exactly that. You know, a bit more complex, obviously, but in its simplistic form, in simplest form, this is what it is. Then you, if you vary these resistors, both of them, at the same time, let's say, actually, it should be like that, really, rather than that. So that's not there. So if you vary this resistance, you vary the frequency. So the, the, the frequency point of the network itself. So what, what this um, achieves is near perfect uh, uh, phase between input and output of the filter, which is an amazing thing because we all love the sound of Pultex. 
it's very musical, but phase, it's a bit, <laughs> it's not great. It sounds amazing, no doubts about it, but this is really uh, uh, outstanding in terms of performance when it comes to phase relationship between input and output of the filter. So the way this is built, it's basically, um, there's a buffer input and output card with all pumps on it, relays for uh, the bypass function and so on. And then there's a bus, if you come closer, I'll show you. Let's see if we can focus in there. So what happens, you come into the signal, you come in with the signal here, in and out, obviously. Oh, this is still on, I've got this bad habit of leaving stuff on while I stick my fingers in it. Uh, so you come, in, you come in here, you go through the op-amp, then you go out, so this is the input op-amp, you go out on the bus, and then all these EQ cards are connected in parallel. Each one of these is uh, tuned to a specific range of frequencies, which then you dial in with the front frequency selector, and, um, and you can change the gain. So these cards are all in parallel with the input and output buffer card. Same obviously applies to the other channel. What makes a difference here is um, the relationship between the resistor that dictates the frequency and the capacitors on that network that I'll show you later on. So it's easy to see on this card that I got, that I pulled out from another unit. This is, a, again, this is a revision one, so it's slightly different in terms of how the components are laid out, and, and obviously there's a difference in uh, the revision of all pump. This is revision one, and that's obviously revision two. Um, so if you look closely, uh, I'm not sure if it, if it shows, but um, what is what the, this decides the frequency here? The frequency point is this capacitor here, and this resistor here. This also does the Q. That's the middle Q. That, that's the middle pot for the Q. So the relation changing this capacitor changes the frequency range of the actual card itself, which is really clever because by just replacing uh, two components, one or two components, you can um, really tune the card up. So, you, uh, so it's really, really clever from that standpoint. So another very interesting thing to notice about this is that the, um, the power supply is external. Um, so there's a, an external box that brings in uh, DC into the system uh, through here. And uh, what that does is that it takes the, um, the transformer, which is a, a very big uh, source for noise outside of the box bringing the noise floor of this unit really down to the bare minimum. Uh, so that's an interesting way of keeping the noise floor down. What has happened throughout the years is that we have had few of these come in to be serviced, but it's such a negligible number. The reason being is that this is a really solid unit. It's really, really sturdy, really well built. The only thing that can go wrong potentially, and that's normally because of time, uh, adjust the op amps so it's normally a quick fix once something goes wrong you bring it in replace the op amp find make sure that everything is fine you know uh, tune it up a bit and off you go again so there is really little that can go wrong on this um, amazing unit to buy what i've noticed is that uh, throughout my experience is that people sometimes um, complain about the inaccuracy of the frequency pods and stuff like that Fair enough. I mean, these I've got plus or minus 20%, I think 10 or 20% um, um, tolerance on them. And to be honest with you, there isn't, there simply isn't a way of getting this to be absolutely that done. It's just the way it is, because it's a potentiometer. If you want pre precision on this for mastering purposes, then you have to have the stepped switches. It's just simple electronics, that's how it works. Um, what I've done, you know, throughout my experience as an engineer, is that when I got, I have had one of these for years, um, and then I sold them both Sontec, uh, which is really the precursor of this EQ. Um, what I've done to to try and find the sweet spot for the, especially the frequency pot, is that um, I use an oscillator and a spectrogram, so I send uh, first um, a. a uh, frequency, a pure frequency through it, fine-tune the EQ, 
uh, and then fine-tune the cue with a spectrogram so I send white noise I actually normally use pink noise because it's easy to see for me so and I'll tell you what the, the, the procedure is that I normally use so let's say that I'm, I'm finishing off a mix and I want to strap this across the stereo mix I normally find my my frequency points with a digital plugin so it's easy uh, uh, and then what I do is I punch this into the stereo bus I put an oscillator on and I'll, let's say that I want to boost 8k so that's a pure frequency so let's send 8k through the unit I'll take the Q of this unit up to 4 which is the maximum you can get and boost the the gain of the specific band that I want to use up to the maximum and then I fine tune the frequency until I see a humongous boost so I know I've centered the frequency pretty much dead on then I back off the frequency, this, the gain and I know that the frequency is set correctly after that I insert some pink noise through it and I look up a, on a spectrogram I know that I've got the frequency dead on I now need to tune the Q just to make sure it's nice and balanced I send the spectrogram in and I, I again I boost the gain about 3 to 6 dBs is normally where I get it at and then I open up the Q just to get it smooth so I can see on both channels that I've got the Q correct that's my trick pra practically speaking to get this to to track properly between left and right um, other than that this is an amazing unit I'm really happy that they're manufacturing them again uh, it's it's just a no-brainer I absolutely love it in terms of in terms of how I normally use it is normally low end and top end these are the normally the two bands that I normally use across the mix because it's easy you dial in a bit of a boost 60 80 Hertz whatever you need it and a bit of hair 10 12 15 16 K something like that and during tr this is for my mixing mainly during tracking it's an amazing tool because it, it really has got humongous amount of potential in terms of finding the frequency cutting out what you don't need just really diving with a high Q so you can really narrow down on whatever resonance you have that you want to get rid of and just cut a bit of it 3db 6db maximum is normally what I go for and just in and out with the bypass and you know you nail the frequency that you need to get rid of amazing tool worth giving it a shot always